so after your first official day of practice yesterday, what are your thoughts on the, the team? Well, right now we're trying to feel ourselves back into uh, some type of playing shape, and we're also trying to figure out who did what over the over the break, and then basically we'll start ramping it up in a couple of weeks, getting into into squad scrimmages and everything. But you know, I was pretty impressed with the practice yesterday. We're going to add some more drills and skills just to go over the finer points, so we're a fine. Um, sort of tuned team once February 5th comes around. And talk about, y you know, you're known for your offense and hitting the long ball. Is that going to be uh, prevalent again this year? Yes, yeah, so that's our MO and that's what we're working on right now. We have numbers one through five lined up that all have potential of hitting home runs. After that, six, seven, eight, and nine, we have players in those slots that already have been in the lineup in the past that hit home runs and we also have some other players that will be inserted in those positions in the lineup that have the potential to hit home runs with the newcomers. So we're pretty excited about what our one through nine uh, lineup is going to look like with our number 10 only really being utilized um, as to who our weakest hitter is or Brittany Hitchcock since she doesn't hit for herself. Uh, defensively, defensively, I know we have some holes maybe in center, third, um, have you found the replacements for those? Or? Yes, we have some upperclassmen that have inserted themselves into some of those positions in regards to third, Christina Akiona, but we also have a newcomer, Rachel Lack, that has a lot of international experience and wants to just solidify one position to play but she's a versatile player. She catches, she plays third, she plays the outfield. Lindsay Wilmon wants to start catching again, which is what we brought her in for. Now with Brittany Hitchcock pitching, they were a battery, battery mates when they were um, prior to coming to UH, and it's a matter of putting them together possibly as battery mates again and taking Lindsay out of the outfield. But we also have uh, Ulu uh, Matangiese that plays left field that we're looking at. Lindsay can play center catch. Rachel can play center and, and catch. Kayla Wartner is also working on her outfield skills and is going to do catching and, and possibly get in the outfield. So we sort of ramped up our catcher outfield and third base Christina Akiona. Uh, Christina will have the edge over Rachel right now because we haven't seen her at third that much. But we also have second base that was wide open and Teana Mata uh, transfer has come in and she was a Juco All-American and, and that bodes well for her. She has come in and has has done a really good job at accepting our system and hitting the ball and she's probably one of our fastest players. Um, I know last night I was talking to Leisha Lee Ili and she's she seems really amped up for the season. Can you talk about her just her growth from her freshman year to now? Well right now she says three words rather than none you know so her growth as you know she got it's a matter of her to grow into a role in her freshman year she knew she was a DP hitter and that's it now she's more of a senior leader uh, she's not one of the captains and I think that takes pressure off of her but being a senior leader hitting over 400 which not many people do that that's something that gives you a little bit of step above everyone and and the distance she hits the ball is just awe-inspiring for everyone it's like let's try to keep up with Laisha and, and Laisha has that about her she's really easygoing nothing really gets to her uh, physically looking at her but I know you know she wants to do well and she has the um, makings of being an All-American if, if we have a good year. Speaking of senior leadership and leadership on the team, can you talk about, you, you named uh, the team selected the three seniors and Kiki Carlos, Kayla Wartner, and Brittany Hitchcock. Can you talk about what they each bring to the table? Yeah, it's the first time we haven't had senior leadership in regards to captains. Uh, the captains are Kayla Wartner, who is a senior, but then Kiki Carlos was looked at by her peers and she was selected as well as a red shirt freshman Brittany Hitchcock because of what they bring to the table which is they're really passionate about softball they're really really into the team doing well the chemistry being uh, of such where we're gonna get along everyone accept their role no drama and that is something that's vital with um, not only being a leader but being a captain so this is the first time we have selected captains and we did it in a way where we asked them about qualities of our players 
and they, they went through 15 different parameters and came up with three names that stood out. And those three young ladies were appointed captains by their peers and selected as good choices by the coaching staff. And lastly, you know, this is the 40th year for Rainbow Wahine softball. Um, your thoughts about where the program has gone from its infancy to now, um, going to the World Series, going to Super Regionals, um, and your tenure as a coach here, uh, can you talk about just uh, the growth of the program? The program has really, you know, sort of developed into a program where teams on the mainland look for Hawaii. Where's Hawaii? Why did they have a down year last year? What happened to Hawaii? I've read some blogs, some Big West blogs and things, and um, it's a matter of everyone looks at us and says Hawaii is one of those marquee top 25, top 50 programs, and that has been an evolution since 1985 when the program was first started here to now, and it's something that is a benefit uh, for us because it puts us on the map teams want to play us we want to play them it's we don't shy away from competition teams don't shy away from us it's not like we're a mid-major that's uh, ranked 150 or lower we're ranked usually in the top 100 or top 50 or even the top 25 and teams aspire to play us and come over here to play us this year we have 41 home contests which is unprecedented and it's something that it's been a building tradition to come over to Hawaii, play us, and we have to t defend our turf, basically. And we also go out there and teams want to play us when we're on the road. And this year we have some marquee teams that we're going to play in BYU and UCLA. And those are the teams we need to play. We need to make our mark. We need to see how good we are. And we always need to do that year in and year out to keep everyone guessing as to what Hawaii is all about being so far away from the mainland we're the unknown entity and that's good because we get to practice every day while the polar vortex or the arctic plunge or whatever you want to call it is going on in the mainland we're over here practicing in nice weather and all we have to contend with is a little bit of rain and that's no problem.